we had enjoyed our uh, stay at the swamp, we were now making our way along the Waccamaw River in South Carolina, and uh, night was getting near, and so we decided we'd pull off in a little stream that fed into the Waccamaw. Uh, it was narrow, and uh, it looked, wandered on off into the woods, so we decided to follow it as far as we could. So we did. Wasn't room enough to turn the boat around to come back out, but luckily we had a great big barn door rudder on the stern of the boat, and she'd steer herself about as well backwards as she would forward. Well, we went on up the river, and it kept getting narrower and narrower. Finally, we come down to a uh, ramshackle dock sticking out in the water, and uh, we tied up to it. I got up and walked up the dock a ways, ste only stepping where I knew there was timbers underneath of it because uh, it looked like it could very well fall through it at any place. Got up there a ways, and there sat a big old two-story house on a little rise in the swamp. Uh, frogs were singing, uh, sound of birds all around. Now and then one of a bullfrog, the sometime roar of a gator. And uh, a man come walking out of the house, a black man, come walking out of the house. And uh, he said, hello. I give him a hi. And uh, we began to talk. And uh, he told me, he said, uh, well, he says, it's most, I asked him, I said, who lives around here? He says, well, it's mostly Geechees live here. I said, I know Let's of Geechees. Oh, yeah, how do you know, he said. I said, well, I told him the story of my father living off near the Oak Road Swamp, the swamp. going into the swamp, going into the piney woods to hunt, and this, that, and the other. And, and there were families of Geechees who lived in the piney woods, uh, slashed trees and collected turpentine for a living. And he knew a lot of them. And uh, he said, yeah, he said, a lot of people do that. He said, we do some of it here, but uh, mostly we got cypress trees. He said, uh, who, who was your father? And I told him. He didn't know him. And I said, uh, well, my father told me a little story about you Geechees. Yeah, he was very interested. I said, well, he told me that Geechees knew Gollum. He said, yeah, we know Gollum. I said, uh, well, my dad said that Gollum was the story the ancient Jews told. And uh, who knows, a thousand years, two thousand years ago, who knows. And uh, hmm, he said, he said anything is possible. He said it was a long time ago. He said we we don't have the story written. We tell it from generation to generation, and that's where it's done as far back as anybody knows. Well, my dad had told me, and I didn't say anything more to him about it. But uh, my dad had told me that the Geechees were proud warriors in Africa, and they would not work for a living. They fought wars for a living, took slaves. And uh, that's what they were proud of. Work was women's work. That was what women did. Proud warriors don't pick cotton, and proud warriors don't plant and harvest corn, and they don't uh, grow tobacco. Proud warriors war. And uh, so we, so they have maintained that tradition among themselves. I know uh, a lot of white people down in Wildgrass Country were way back, were scared to death of the Geechees. Uh, would hardly go into Piney Woods for them. But uh, Dad's family had a tradition of going in there and knowing them. And, uh, and they liked them. So they were good people. Well, we shook hands all around. And uh, I said, uh, can I tell you a story? The lady shook her head, yes. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story of a lion and a goat. She smiled real big. And then I began to tell. Bear lion, him a hunt. And spies, and spies bear goat to hold an upper or big rock to walk him out. On the chaw, he creep up, fetch him, um, he creep up, catch him, um. well, he, well, he get close, let him, he notice some good. Bear go keep on chow. Bear lion, try for, find out what bear goat do eat. He see him nothing except 
something the naked rock. Why, why would uh, the goat keep on chaw? And chaw, and chaw. Berlin can't make the thing out. And he come close and he say, Hey, Bear goat, what do you da eat? Bear goat shake when Bear goat skied when Bear lion rise up before him. But he keep her whole heart and he make answer. Me to chaw this rock and if you don't left when me done me gwine eat you. This what say Bear goat. Bold man get out of difficulty. Way coward man lose a life. When I finished, the lady clapped her hands, and her husband reached out, shook my hand again, and she said, "You know Gola?" And I said, "No." I said, "This is this is the only Gola I know." My father told me this story when I was a boy, and, and uh, oh, I remembered it. About that time, thundered a couple times, and uh, started to rain a little bit. So we were invited in. Had a house full of kids. <laughs> well, I guess that was my best Geechee. Uh, it was supposed to be Gullah, as talked to me by my mother's father, uh, J.M. Williams. Uh, J.M. was uh, born and raised down uh, almost on the uh, Swanee River, there at the very bottom of, of Georgia. He told me that story when I was a kid. It was really a, a child's story. I woke in the pre-dawn to the sound of a wildcat screaming. I jumped out of the bunk, up through the hatch, and stood in the cockpit in my underwear, revolver in hand, staring straight into the big round eyes of a bobcat. I think we were probably both, uh, both shaken, and the cat slowly, very slowly backed up, went back into the shade of a cypress tree, and, and I could no longer see him. But I found myself shaken. And then I remembered the, the dreams for, during the night, Gullah, Gollum, Geechies, big old houses in the swamp, rotting docks, and uh, realized I had been dreaming of childhood stories I'd heard as a child. I guess uh, the next thing we'll do is uh, we'll be heading on down to the Sandpit River in Georgetown probably uh, tomorrow. And uh, so y'all join us and uh, we'll make the trip on down the river. Bye-bye, y'all.